Overwatch. A game that graced our screens in 2016 following a triumphant beta phase quickly became one of my all-time favorites. Its allure stemmed from a captivating blend of memorizing characters, intricately crafted world building, a deep and captivating lore, and gameplay that truly set apart from the rest. At the helm of this remarkable creation was Jeff Kaplan, the visionary game director who played a pivotal role into Overwatch's early development and success. Like countless others, I found myself wholeheartedly immersed in the virtual universe, dedicating countless hours to its captivating realms and cherishing every moment of my gameplay experience. What truly set Overwatch apart from its contemporaries was its extraordinary diversity found within its cast of characters. Each hero possessed a distinct playstyle, bolstered by its richly developed backstories and incredible talent of their voice actors. Like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> the game effortlessly showed this vibrant array of characters through breathtaking cinematics which not only generated excitement, but also provided invaluable context to the game's overreaching lore. Overwatch broke new ground by daring to tread paths that other multiplayer games had yet to explore, and it is precisely this audacious spirit that imbued the game with its exceptional and unparalleled charm. Overwatch launched with an impeccable level of polish, boasting a remarkable bug-free experience that allowed players to immerse themselves fully in its captivating world. With every level gained, the reward of a loot box awaited, adding an element of excitement and anticipation to the progression system. Prestige levels offered a sense of accomplishment for those seeking an extra challenge. The game's extensive collection of skins, unlockable through loot boxes, granted players the ability to personalize their favorite heroes in unique and visually stunning ways. Additionally, the introduction of a ranked mode accompanied by the coveted golden guns earned through competitive play provided a compelling incentive for players to test their mettle against others. At launch, Overwatch introduced us to a memorable roster of 21 diverse characters, each with their own distinct playstyles and captivating backstories. The developer's commitment to ongoing support was evident through its frequent updates, which not only expanded the game's content, but also introduced exhilarating events that showcased new cosmetics for the characters, breathtaking maps, and even fresh additions to the roster. With such consistent dedication, the future of Overwatch appeared incredibly promising, and players were filled with hope for the adventure yet to come. In July of the same year, the introduction of the character Ana marked the beginning of the series of exciting character releases for Overwatch. Subsequently, in November, the enigmatic hacker Sabra had her entrance, followed by the formidable tank Orissa in March. These additions to the roster were widely regarded as exemplary, representing what many considered to be the golden era of Overwatch. Their unique abilities and playstyle injected fresh energy into the game, captivating players and adding depth to the strategic gameplay. However, as time went on, subsequent character releases such as Doomfist, Moira, Brigitte, and Wrecking Ball faced a fair share of controversy. They are often criticized for their perceived imbalance and their tendency to dominate the meta. This led to a sense of repetitiveness and frustration among players, as the game seemed to revolve around these characters, stifling diversity and the creativity in team composition. Regrettably, this period marked a turning point where Overwatch began to lose some of its luster, with players gradually growing weary of the unbalanced gameplay dynamics. It is important to note that while some players may have felt fatigued during this fade, Overwatch continued to evolve and receive updates to an effort to address balance issues and improve the overall experience. However, the negative reception surrounding certain character releases undeniably contributed to a sense of disillusionment among a portion of the player base, signaling a challenging period for the game. The introduction of characters like Brigitte and Moira, who defined traditional role expectations, indeed sparked debates among players, particularly professionals, who recognized the flaws within their designs. Brigitte touted as a healer, exhibited tank-like qualities that disrupted the established balance. While Moira, despite being classified as a healer, possessed considerable offensive capabilities. These departures from the conventional character archetypes left many feelings that these new additions were ill-suited for the game's framework. Moreover, Doomfist and Wrecking Ball garnered reputations for the bothersome and frustrating playstyles, further contributed to player dissatisfaction. 
The adoption of these characters as part of the dominant meta exaggerated the issue as the limited strategic diversity and led to repetitive gameplay experiences. Consequently, a significant number of players grew disenchanted, ultimately resulting in a decline in the game's player population. In an attempt to rectify these concerns, the Overwatch development team implemented reworks for some of these characters, aiming to rebalance their kits and address community feedback. However, by the time these adjustments were made, the damage had already been done, and the player base had already begun to dwindle. Despite the efforts made to restore equilibrium, the impact of these character misstep had a lasting effect on the overall perception and popularity of Overwatch. In addition to these previously mentioned characters, Ash and Baptiste emerged as fresh new additions to the Overwatch roster. While they may not have been hailed as meta-defining characters, they offered players enjoyable and unique gameplay experiences. Their introduction provided a glimpse of hope for those seeking variety and excitement within the game. However, the arrival of Sigma in August 2019 marked a significant turning point for Overwatch. The introduction of this tank hero created an ongoing issue within the game. The prominence of shields. The proliferation of shield based compositions became pervasive, creating an environment where having both tanks playing shield characters felt mandatory for success. The overwhelming strength of shields consequently led to a lack of strategic diversity and reduced the overall enjoyment of many players. This issue became a major source of the frustration and dissatisfaction within the community, leading to further departures from the game. The prevalence of shield-focused gameplay became a significant reason why many players chose to disengage from Overwatch. The imbalance and frustrations associated with the shield-heavy meta contributed to a decline in player engagement, further exaggerating the challenges the game faced during this period. The final character release in Overwatch came in the form of Echo. Introduced to the game in April 2020, Echo held a unique significance within the game's lore as she served as the announcer, adding an extra layer of depth and immersion to the gameplay experience. Upon her release, Echo was reasonably balanced and brought an element of excitement and enjoyment to players, offering a fresh and engaging playstyle. However, following Echo's introduction, Overwatch experienced a lull in character releases, which approximately two years passing without any new additions to the roster. This dearth of new content affected the game's momentum and left players longing for fresh updates and diverse gameplay options. Additionally, the frequency of events began to slow down, further contributing to a sense of stagnation within the Overwatch community. During this period, the game's development seemed to enter a transitional phase, as the team behind Overwatch explored different avenues for the game's evolution. While this hiatus in character releases and slowed event cadence left some players craving more, it also created an anticipation for what the future may hold for the beloved game. Please welcome Game Director of Overwatch, Jeff Kaplan. How are you doing? You having fun? At BlizzCon 2019, a pivotal moment arrived for Overwatch and its dedicated community as Jeff Kaplan took to the stage to announce the highly anticipated sequel, Overwatch 2. This next chapter in the Overwatch saga promised an exciting addition to the game, a robust player versus environment, or PvE mode for short. This PvE mode was designed not only to provide immersive gameplay experiences, but also to delve deeper into the intricate lore that captivated fans from the beginning. In this new PvE mode, players would embark on thrilling missions, engaging in cooperative gameplay while exploring the expansive narrative of Overwatch. The introduction of a skill tree system added a layer of depth, allowing players to experiment with the various character abilities and tailor their playstyle to suit their preferences. These missions were accompanied by the cinematic sequences, further enriching the storytelling experience and bringing the vibrant Overwatch universe to life. The development team didn't stop there. They also dedicated themselves to enhancing the overall gameplay experience. Overwatch 2 featured notable improvements to its engine, introducing a new physics engine specifically optimized for the AI in the PvE mode. This technological upgrade aimed to deliver enhanced realism and immersion, heightening the gameplay and pausing the boundaries of what Overwatch had previously achieved. 
Moreover, Overwatch 2 treated players to an array of fresh content for the player vs player or PvP mode. This included new maps and an exciting game mode promising even more diverse and thrilling experiences for competitive play. The announcement of Overwatch 2 at BlizzCon 2019 ignited a sense of excitement and anticipation within the Overwatch community. With the promise of expanded lore, engaging PvE missions, technical advancements, and exciting PvP additions, players eagerly awaited the bright future that Overwatch 2 had in store. As players eagerly awaited the arrival of Overwatch 2, the original Overwatch game experienced a noticeable decline in updates and content additions. Events which were once a source of excitement and anticipation began to feel repetitive and lacking in novelty. The number of new skins introduced during events started to dwindle, leaving players yearning for more diverse and innovative cosmetic options. This was exemplified by instances such as the Chinese New Year event, where only a meager two skins were released. Following that, there was an event featuring reskins with different colors, further diminishing the excitement surrounding new cosmetic offerings. With the limited updates and diminishing rewards in Overwatch 1, many players opted to take a break from the game, anticipating the arrival of Overwatch 2. The lack of fresh content and the reduced incentive to continue playing contributed a decrease in player engagement. During this transitional period, Players were eagerly awaiting the highly anticipated sequel, where they hoped to find a revitalized and rejuvenated Overwatch experience. Within this time gap, the Overwatch community was met with the news of Jeff Kaplan, the game's lead designer and game director, stepping down. Jeff Kaplan had played a pivotal role in the development and success of Overwatch, and his departure left a void within the community. His passion and vision had been instrumental to ensuring that Overwatch 1 released in a polished and well-received state. A little while after, Blizzard, the company behind Overwatch, had been embroiled in a series of controversies with CEO Bobby Kotick at the center of scrutiny. These issues ranged from handling of the Hong Kong protests and ongoing patch controversies such as larger problems plaguing Activision Blizzard. One notable controversy directly affecting Overwatch is the recent name change of the hero known as McCree. After revelations of the namesake's association with a former Blizzard employee involved in the company's workplace misconduct allegations, the change was met with a mixed reaction from the community, with some plotting it as a step towards addressing systematic issues, while others criticized it as a performative and insufficient. This controversy further highlights the larger concerns about the workplace culture and accountability within Blizzard. The decision to rename a beloved hero raises questions about the company's commitment to addressing the deeper problems and fostering a healthier environment for its employees. It adds to the growing disillusionment and frustration felt by the Overwatch community, as players grapple with the implications of these controversies on the game and the company as a whole. Alongside these issues, Bobby Kotick's leadership has come under intense scrutiny. The allegations of workplace harassment, discrimination, and a toxic work environment have cast a shadow over Activision Blizzard. The most shocking revelation is the allegation that Kotick threatened to have his assistant killed, which has further eroded trust in his ability to lead effectively and maintain a safe work environment. These controversies, including the McCree name change and Kotick's alleged misconduct, have left a profound impact on the perception of Blizzard and its associated games. The community has expressed deep concern and disappointment, and it has added to the sense of disillusionment and frustration among players. In addition to the controversies surrounding Bobby Kotick and the specific issues within Overwatch, it is important to acknowledge that Activision Blizzard as a whole has faced a multitude of controversies. These controversies have had significant ramifications on both employees and players. Employees within the company have taken a stand against the workplace issues and have protested, quit their positions, and spoken out about the problematic culture at Activision Blizzard. Their actions have shed light on the deep-seated problems within the company, including allegations of harassment, discrimination, and toxic work environment. The brave voices of these employees have brought attention to the need for change and accountability. On the player side, many individuals have chosen to boycott Activision Blizzard games in response to the controversies. This includes refraining from purchasing these games or outright stopping the engagement within them. The player community has expressed their disappointment, anger, and loss of trust in the company due to these ongoing issues. It is not just Overwatch that has been affected. 
Other games under the Activision Blizzard umbrella, such as Call of Duty and World of Warcraft, have also faced their own controversies. The negative perception and erosion of trust extend across the entire company and its portfolio of games. The collective impact of these controversies, employee protests, and player boycotts has significantly impacted how Activision Blizzard is viewed by the public. The company's reputation has been tarnished and many individuals have lost trust in both the company and its games. After these controversies died down, Overwatch 2 announced that they were changing the way the game would work. Overwatch 2 brought both excitement and some concerns within the community after these announcements. One significant change that caught attention was the shift towards a new free-to-play model structure. While the removal of loot boxes was generally perceived as a positive change, Blizzard's vague wording regarding the introduction of an in-game store left players uncertain about how skins and other cosmetics would be earned or obtained. The lack of transparency Transparency regarding progression and rewards created some ambiguity and raised questions among the player base. Additionally, the introduction of a battle pass system, along with the announcement of three new heroes, generated mixed reactions. Two of the new heroes were accompanied by captivating cinematics, heightening the anticipation for the release. However, the most significant alteration was the shift for the original 6v6 gameplay format to a 5v5 mode, with only one tank instead of two. This change aimed to address the earlier issues surrounding shields and promote greater balance and strategic diversity within the matches. Alongside the tank changes, other character reworks were implemented to further enhance overall balance and gameplay experience. However, one disappointment for the community was the announcement that the promised PvE mode would not be releasing with Overwatch 2, but would be added later when it was fully developed. This decision led some players expressing their discontent, viewing Overwatch 2 as more of an Overwatch 1.5 rather than a full-fledged sequel due to the perceived lack of substantial new content. Overall, the announcement of Overwatch 2 brought a mixture of excitement, uncertainty, and disappointment within the community. As more details and updates became available, players eagerly awaited further information and development developments to see how the game would evolve and address their concerns. In October 2022, Overwatch 2 was finally released, but the game's launch was not without its share of issues that caught the attention of the players. While the promised features and improvements were indeed present in the game, many players found themselves questioning the overall appeal and incentive to play. One significant change that drew criticism was the removal of loot boxes, which had been a staple in Overwatch 1. However, the removal of loot boxes also meant the removal of leveling system, which was the primary means of players to earn these boxes and obtain free cosmetics. This absence of leveling system created a void in how players could acquire free cosmetics, which became a significant concern for the community. Without a clear alternative or replacement system for earning cosmetics, players felt a lack of progression and reward for their gameplay efforts. The absence of reliable method to obtain a new cosmetic item impacted the overall motivation and sense of achievement within Overwatch 2. The issue of obtaining free cosmetics was an important aspect for many players as cosmetics had played a significant role in the original Overwatch, allowing players to customize and personalize their favorite heroes. Without a clear and accessible avenue for acquiring new cosmetics, players began questioning the value and appeal of investing their time and effort into Overwatch 2. These concerns and criticisms reflected the community's desire for a fair and rewarding system that would allow them to earn cosmetics and experience a sense of progression. As the game continued to evolve post-release, addressing these concerns and finding a satisfactory solution became a crucial challenge for the Overwatch Overwatch development team. In contrast to the previous system in Overwatch 1, where cosmetics were obtained through leveling up and earning loot boxes, Overwatch 2 introduced a significant shift in acquiring of cosmetics. The removal of leveling system meant players no longer had the opportunity to earn loot boxes that granted chances to obtain desired cosmetics. This change was met with disappointment and frustration for the player base. Furthermore, the shift towards a monetized approach on Overwatch 2 raised a concern among players. Previously free cosmetics in Overwatch 1 were now only available for purchase with real money. The pricing of these cosmetics were often perceived as exorbitant 
with some items costing as much as $20. This steep price tag for individual cosmetics created a sense of dissatisfaction among players, as it felt like an excessive and unfair cost for an in-game content. This was also an issue for players who previously had paid for Overwatch 1, as now, because the game is now free to play, the free cosmetics that they were able to earn in Overwatch 1 were no longer obtainable for free in Overwatch 2. There was no incentive or discount, or even a way to earn these skins at a relative cost for people who paid for Overwatch 1. The primary method introduced to earning cosmetics in Overwatch 2 was through the Battle Pass system which required a purchase. Although a free tier was available, the cosmetics offered in the free tier were often considered uninspiring or lackluster in comparison to the more desirable items in the paid tiers. Additionally, players discovered that it would take an extensive amount of time to accumulate the necessary in-game currency through the Battle Pass's free tier to obtain even a single desired cosmetic. A chart illustrating an extensive time investment needed to acquire all previously free skins through the Battle Pass currency revealed a daunting prospect as it would take years or numerous seasons to collect them all. The shift in the cosmetic acquisition model and the perceived pricing issues introduced a sense of dissatisfaction and frustration among players who had previously enjoyed the accessibility and progression of the cosmetics in Overwatch 1. The community expressed the desire for a fair and reasonable system that allowed them to obtain desired cosmetics without exorbitant costs or prolonged time investments. One of the most significant issues that Overwatch 2 faced was the decision to lock certain heroes behind the battle pass, making them inaccessible for free-to-play players. This new system created a diverse divide within the player base, as a team composition and hero selection are crucial aspects of the team-based gameplay in Overwatch. In a game where specific heroes are necessary to counter others and maintain strategic balance, the restriction of certain characters to paying players only had a detrimental impact on the overall gameplay experience. Free-to-play players found themselves at a disadvantage, unable to switch to these locked heroes Heroes, particularly if they were considered part of the meta or crucial for countering opposing team composition. This handicap not only affected the individual players, but also had a negative ripple effect on the team's performance, ultimately hurting the overall competitive experience. The introduction of this system created a sense of frustration and unfairness among the free-to-play community. It felt like an unnecessary hindrance that limited their ability to fully engage and contribute to the game's dynamic. As a result, many players, including myself, began to lose hope and interest in Overwatch 2. While the game received updates that introduced refreshing elements, the lack of progression and restrictions placed on hero availability eroded the motivation to continue playing for many individuals. The absence of a meaningful progression system and the limitations imposed by the hero lock system left players feeling disillusioned and without a compelling reason to invest their time and energy into the game. Despite these disappointments, there remained hope and anticipation for the promised PvE mode, which was seen as a potential saving grace and opportunity for a different, enjoyable gameplay experience within Overwatch 2. In May 2023, the much-anticipated PvE mode for Overwatch was unexpectedly cancelled, leaving many players devastated and disillusioned. This decision came as a significant blow to those who had invested their time and money into the game, eagerly awaiting for the promised PvE experience. The announcement by Aaron Keller, the new game director of Overwatch, revealed that the decision to cancel the mode had been made at the end of the previous year, indicating that players had been kept in the dark about the fate of the PvE mode for an extended period. This revelation shattered the trust and confidence of many players, not just in Overwatch, but also in Blizzard and even Activision as a whole. The feeling of being deceived or misled was pervasive among the player base. The cancellation of the PvE mode after months of anticipation and hope left a bitter taste in the mouths of those who had eagerly awaited this feature. What exacerbates the disappointment is the fact that the engine overhaul in Overwatch 2 was specifically designed to cater to a PvE mode. The decision to abandon the mode meant that the potential of the engine overhaul went untapped, rendering Overwatch 2 in the eyes of many players a subpar version of Overwatch 1. The cancellation of the PvE mode not only deprived players of an anticipated gameplay experience, but also undermined the foundation on which Overwatch 2 was built upon. The fallout from this decision had further strained the relationship between the player community and the development team. Players felt let down and betrayed as their expectations were shattered. During the Xbox Showcase on June 11th, 
Overwatch 2 surprised fans with a presentation showcasing the upcoming season of the game. Exciting new features were revealed including new game modes, a teaser for a new hero, an updated practice range, and story missions that were originally cut content from the PvE mode. However, the disappointment came when it was announced that only three story missions would be available and players would have to pay $15 to access them. This decision has sparked frustration and backlash among the player base. Instead of being a free update for all players, the limited number of story missions being locked behind a paywall has been viewed as a cash grab by many. The outcry from players and streamers highlights the discontent with this approach. Many feel that it undermines the spirit of fairness and inclusivity, as players have been eagerly anticipating the PvE mode that it was initially promised. The decision to charge for a few story missions has left players feeling betrayed and disillusioned. In conclusion, the journey of Overwatch, from its highly successful release to its current state, has been filled with both triumphs and disappointments. The game initially captivated players with its diverse cast of characters, immersive world building, and engaging gameplay. However, as time went on, various issues began to plague the experience, leading to a decline in player engagement and a sense of disillusionment. The departure of Jeff Kaplan, who was a key figure in the game's development, marked a significant transition for Overwatch. His absence was felt as players witnessed a shift in the direction and decision making within the Overwatch team. Controversy surrounding the game and its publisher further strained the relationship between players and the development studio, eroding trust and undermining the faith of the community. The release of Overwatch 2 brought with it a mix of excitement and trepidation. While the promise of new features and expanded gameplay experience generated anticipation, the execution fell short of expectations. The questionable changes in the monetization model, the limitations imposed on free-to-play players, and the cancellation of the highly anticipated PvE mode left many feeling disheartened and betrayed. As Overwatch 2 moved forward, it seemed to lose its identity, with the promised improvements overshadowed by missed opportunities and unfulfilled potential. The game felt like a diluted version of its predecessor, lacking the same level of depth, progression, and accessibility that players had come to anticipate in Overwatch 1. As we reflect on the trajectory of Overwatch, it becomes clear that the success and longevity of the game rely not only on the initial strength, but also on the ability of its developers to adapt, listen to feedback, and prioritize the needs and desires of their player community. Only time will tell if Overwatch can reclaim its former glory and regain the trust and enthusiasm of its dedicated fanbase. But I'm personally not a fan right now, and probably won't be for a long time. <laughs>